When it comes to armor in Monster Hunter, defenses and resistances are nice, but what you really want are the armor skills. This guide series is going to focus on a progression path that you can easily follow for a reasonable build to get you through low rank and high rank. In low rank, progression is fairly linear and there isn't a lot of need to deviate. High rank is much more open-ended and will have many more options for you to explore. High rank builds will focus on decoration lists and charmless setups as those require rare materials and a lot of luck for decorations. You will need to make a choice between alpha and beta gear. Alpha gear has more skills, but sometimes has skills that aren't particularly useful on them. The beta versions usually give up skills for decoration slots. If you don't have decorations, the alpha sets are always better. If you have powerful decorations, the beta pieces are usually the better option as it will allow for further customization. These builds are reasonably effective and will be sufficient for getting you through the game. You may have skills that you favor on certain weapon types that aren't listed, and you should experiment to learn your playstyle. Your default armor is terrible, and you'll want to upgrade it right away. The easiest thing you can do is just build the entire bone set. This will be mostly beneficial for the headpiece's health boost, granting you plus 15 maximum HP, and the bone chest's attack up, granting you plus 3 attack power. The remaining bone pieces will benefit certain weapon types and not others. The gloves will give slugger, which is good for blunt weapons like hammer, hunting horn, and file attacks from the charge blade and switch axe. Bone Coil is only good for Hunting Horn, but it will extend the length of your songs. The Bone Greaves grant Entomologist, which helps prevent you from destroying Vespoids and Hornitars so you can carve them. Regardless of the skills it offers, this set is extremely easy to build and represents a good armor value spike that you should take starting out. Early on you'll be given an assignment to hunt Kestodons. After carving some, you'll unlock the ability to build Kestodon Gloves. Build these for Affinity Sliding, which gives you a temporary boost to your critical hit rate after sliding for a short period of time. They also have a strong defense boost over bone gauntlets and should be picked up for most weapon types. This set will be enough to tide you over until you hunt Great Jagras. Afterwards, you'll want to look into picking up the Jagras Coil. This provides Fortify, which gives you an attack and defense bonus if your HP reaches zero and you're carted back to camp. Fortify is a nice bonus for new players, and even veteran players will cart occasionally. It's a good pickup for all weapon types. Then you'll have to hunt Kuluyaku. You'll want to build both its Kulu male chest armor and the Kulu Greaves leg armor. The chest grants stamina surge which increases your stamina recovery rate. This is a great skill for every weapon type, but certain weapons will benefit much more from it. The Kulu Greaves grant critical eye which increases your affinity or critical hit rate by 3%. This isn't huge, but going from 0 to 3% affinity will actually allow you to perform critical hits and it will be a significant damage increase. This will be an acceptable set of baseline armor for the next mandatory fights. From here on though, things will be handled on a weapon by weapon basis. There are really two ways to use a greatsword. The first is what was considered good fundamentals in previous Monster Hunter games, which was to run in, do an unsheath attack, immediately sheath your sword, and then run away to wait for another opening. This largely eliminates the greatsword's one weakness of being really slow while drawn. This style favors critical draw, quick sheath, and focus for charging the initial attack. It won't be as high damage wise as the second style, but it will be a safe and reasonably effective way to take down every monster in the game. The second style is new to Monster Hunter World. It involves going for a true charge by chaining together three charging attacks by going through the shoulder tackle. It's much more difficult to pull off, but will offer significantly faster kill times and damage output. You'll want to get skills like focus for faster charges and any kind of damage, affinity, and sharpness boosting skills that you can get. Since the draw attack style is much easier to use, it will be the focus of this guide. The first optional upgrade available will be the Vespoid Helm, which grants quick sheath. This is a reasonable pickup for both styles of greatsword play, and it's roughly equivalent defense-wise to the Bone Helm. It's your choice whether you want to use it or not. Otherwise, the base armor set will have to tide you over to take on Pookie Pookie and Baroth. Since there isn't a lot of greatsword-specific gear at this point, there will be several options available to you. These aren't necessarily good for greatsword, it's just that there isn't anything better. You can build Baroth's head for guard. You can also build the gloves for Marathon Runner. Neither of these are overly good for Greatsword, but you may want to consider them. After hunting Juratotus, there's an upgrade you should definitely take. Juratotus' Greaves grant Focus. Focus decreases the amount of time required to charge your Greatsword attacks. This will be a good pickup that will last you the majority of low rank, if not the entirety of it. Then you'll have to hunt Toby Kadachi. There are a few upgrades you should pick up from Toby Kadachi. The Kadachi Gloves grant Evade Extender. If you haven't upgraded your gloves yet, you should pick these up now. It is a decent pickup for repositioning while your Greatsword is drawn. You can upgrade your Vespoid Helm to a Kadachi Helm for Constitution to help with dodging and it will help out in a pinch if you're forced to guard. It does offer a reasonable defense boost on top of that. Anjaneth is next and its offerings aren't anything special, so move onwards into the Coral Highlands.
Once you're in the Coral Highlands, you'll have access to the King Beetle set. The chest armor grants Quick Sheath. You should pick this up, as the Kulu chest is starting to feel pretty weak. If you have bad luck with great hornflies from your ancient tree, hunt Zitsi Yaku and pick up the Zitsi mail for constitution. Then hunt Paolumu as part of the story. Paolumu's coil will be a good replacement for the Jagger's coil if you feel you need more defenses. Otherwise, fortify will be helpful if you cart to boost your attack power, and there isn't much better at this point. You can also pick up the Lumu head for stamina surge. Constitution is better when you're forced to guard or dodge, but the defenses on the Lumu head are better. It's your call. Once you're in the Rotten Vale, you'll have access to Warped Bones and Sinister Cloth from the Tail Rider Safari. This is when we finally get some good greatsword gear. Pick up the Death Stench Grips for focus. Finish off Rataban, then Legiana. Neither of these monsters have much offerings for us. Next is Odegaron, and its set is reasonable. The three-piece set bonus of Punishing Draw can actually be utilized effectively on Greatsword. Pick up the Odegaron Coil for Critical Eye, and the Boots and Helmet if you want Punishing Draw. The Odegaron Helmet is only good for hunting Odegaron, but you'll lose the very valuable Quick Sheath or Focus by dropping the Chester Gloves. The Odegaron Greaves double your defenses compared to Jury Greaves, so that's a reasonable trade-off. Afterwards, you want to hunt Rathalos and Diablos. Both of these monsters have great upgrades, but you are so close to high rank that you may want to skip them, as high rank armor is universally better. Of course, this is an idealized armor guide. Rathalos chest is the most desired for weakness exploit. It does require a plate, but depending on your preferences, will be used for a good chunk of high rank because weakness exploit is that good. Greatswords won't benefit that much from the three piece bonus of critical element, so you can skip it. You'll be using raw damage greatswords. Then you'll want to hunt Diablos and pick up Diablos' helmet for critical draw. This gives you 30% affinity on your draw attacks. It's excellent. Build this set if you want, but it's time to move on to High Rank. High Rank finally introduces us to some options. There's a lot of upgrades available now, and you can immediately go and hunt High Rank versions of everything in Low Rank. The easy answer is that anything that worked for you in Low Rank will work here while providing additional skills and High Rank defenses. This guide assumes you have no useful decorations, as such the Beta gear is simply worse than the Alpha gear as it loses skills for decoration slots. If you have decorations, consider the Beta versions of some pieces, otherwise stick with Alpha. The same goes for charms, and this guide is charmless. Go ahead and pick up whatever charms you see fit, like attack or handicraft. The Kulu Headpiece Alpha is usually the go-to, but it's not so black and white here. If you're using the hit-and-run strategy of Unsheath Attacks, then Critical Draws plus 30% Affinity will beat out the plus 15% for Weakness Exploit, as well as being more useful against non-weak points if you do miss. If you're using the True Charge style, then you should upgrade to the Kulu Headpiece Alpha. If you're still using the Death Stench Gloves, upgrade them to Kestodon Guards Alpha to maintain focus and gain Affinity Sliding as well as high rank defenses. Then hunt Juratotus and pick up Juratotus's Greaves Alpha. In conjunction with the Kested on Guards Alpha, this will max out your focus and you'll have the fastest charge as possible. You can also pick up the King Beetle set for some Quick Sheath. Picking up the King Beetle chest and waist will max out Quick Sheath. This will be arguable if it's worth losing Weakness Exploit and Critical Eye, but that's your call. You'll have to hunt Pink Rathian. Its coil is a decent option for handicraft and poison resistance. Of course, now that our big pickle Devil Joe is in the game, you can also build the Champ Belt as a viable alternative. This set should make you adequately prepared to take on the higher tier monsters of high rank. Odegaron's set is a reasonable choice. You'll be able to pick up Punishing Draw for two pieces. Pick up the Odegaron Mail and Waste to get Speed Sharpening maxed out and two stacks of Critical Eye as well as unlocking Punishing Draw if you're using the Draw style. If you don't want to farm Odegaron, that's fine, you can skip straight ahead to Diablos. Now you'll need to hunt a lot of Diablos and Black Diablos. You won't be able to use Punishing Draw with this setup, but you will have a 100% crit rate on draw attacks with maxed focus and the extremely valuable non-elemental boost. You'll want to build the Diablos Helm Beta for critical draw in a slot since Heroics is too hard to utilize for most players. Then you'll want to pick up the Diablos Coil Alpha to max out critical draw. Then build the Diablos Nero Male Alpha for Resentment, which increases your attack power when you have a red portion of your health meter. Finally, pick up the Diablos Nero Bracers Alpha for Focus and Marathon Runner. Combine this with the Juratotus Greaves Alpha to max out your focus. You will need a lot of Majestic Horns and Black Spiral Horn Plus to make this set. It's recommended to do horn runs. Simply focus all your efforts on breaking both the horns by using things like traps and barrel bombs, then select Return from Quest. 
You'll save a lot of time by doing this, and you won't have to finish off the monsters to get the rewards. Of course, you will still need other materials to build these pieces, so only do this if you need the horns. This set will give you 100% critical hit on draw attacks, max out focus for fastest charges, and bludgeoner with non-elemental boost. It's a great set for raw greatswords using the draw style. Obviously, once you get a non-elemental boost decoration, your gear options are freed up significantly. This set will be adequate for everything else in the game. Everything after this is just a matter of customization and preference. The Elder Dragon sets are usually safe bets, but won't necessarily be better or worse than this, just different. Nergigante set is a reasonable option. The big skill for true charge style greatsword is Maxima Might. This gives you a large affinity increase while your stamina is full. This stipulation should be a non-issue, as greatsword attacks don't use stamina. Maxima Might is a very consistent alternative to weakness exploit, but it can also be combined with weakness exploit to reach extremely high affinity. Of course, if you find yourself missing weak points, Maxima Might is a lot easier to use. The rest of the set has a lot of attack and agitator, which works well on Greatsword. The Dragon King eye patch has weakness exploit 2 and a tier 3 decoration slot, making it a good pickup. I used 4 piece Nergigante with Dragon King eye patch for the entirety of my tempered monster hunts with reasonable efficiency. It's not the best set, but it's an easy to farm option that's not reliant on decorations. After Nergigante, you'll gain access to Dober and Damascus gear. Dober has a lot of attack options, and Damascus has a lot of focus options. The Damascus Male Beta has level 2 focus and 3 level 1 decoration slots which can free up your boot options for something more desirable like Handicraft. Likewise, the Waste Armor has level 1 focus and 3 level 1 slots, making them easy ways to max out focus and slot in a lot of extra skills. After beating Valhazak, you'll have access to high rank Death Stench gear. The gloves give 2 stacks of focus, giving you more build options. The boots give 2 stacks of Handicraft, which will be really desirable to push yourself to white sharpness. Kushala Daura has a lot of pieces with Handicraft. The Chest Armor has excellent synergy with Greatsword by having two stacks of Handicraft and one stack of Focus. Unfortunately, it's actually quite difficult to get one stack of Critical Draw, which means a Critical Draw decoration is extremely valuable. It will free up your Waist or Leg Armor for something more valuable, like Handicraft. Your final build may look something like this, but it's a matter of mixing and matching once you get access to better decorations and charms. No matter what, You'll want level 3 focus and critical draw or weakness exploit and maximum might maxed out with as much handicraft as you can muster.